Well, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's good that we get to serve a great God who's good to us at all times. So let's sing and let's rejoice to our great God. Water can turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no service this online Sunday and I want to give you a few announcements before we continue in our worship uh, of course Lord willing we are going to be back in school on Monday uh, but please pay attention to any announcements that might adjust sometimes but right now as of today we will be back at regular schedule uh, we have uh, some ball games this week at home at Newburgh Christian uh, but the main one would be Friday night which is our homecoming for our kids so make plans to be a part of that exciting homecoming celebration for Newport Christian Academy. Uh, this coming Saturday, we have a men's work day from nine to 12, and then we have a youth rally from five to nine uh, on Saturday the 29th, and then Sunday the 30th, Southeastern Sounds of Praise Ensemble will be here. Brother Steve Berry, the Director of Development at the college, will be preaching for us, excited about those services. Uh, but also our Church 242 class, Lord willing, will start on January the 30th. I know we've had to, to uh, push that off uh, for a few weeks now. Uh, tonight, uh, our life groups will not be meeting uh, in person, again, still because of some of the roads and things. Uh, but many of them will be meeting via Zoom. So just contact your life group leader for life group information tonight. Otherwise, we love you and we are so thankful that God allows us to meet together like this. Uh, there's a lot of promises in God's word that uh, you can hold to today. But one I want to encourage you with, that even though we cannot gather together at church, 
uh, today, right there, wherever you're watching this, there's a God, the God of heaven, who's right there with you, uh, worshiping with you, just like he's worshiping uh, here with us. And so I want to encourage you today, praise and worship the Lord for the promise that he is a God that will never leave you nor forsake you. He is a God who stays. me a lost cause cause I feel just like a lost cause if I were you I would have turned around and walked away I would have labeled me beyond repair cause I feel like I'm beyond repair but somehow you don't see me like I do somehow you're still you're the God who stays You're the God who stays You're the one who runs in my direction When the whole world walks away You're the God who stands With wide open arms And you tell me nothing I have ever done Could separate my heart from the God who stays now we want you to stand and join us as we worship this God who never leaves us, and never forsakes us. I used to hide every time I thought I let you down. I always thought I had to earn my way, but I'm learning you don't work that way. Cause somehow you don't see me like I do. Somehow you're sitting. You're the God who stays You're the one who runs in my direction When the whole world walks away You're the God who stands With wide open arms And you tell me nothing I have ever done To separate my heart from the God who stays My shame
you for joining us this morning for our services online. Welcome to New Life, Lord willing. We look forward to seeing you back this coming week for our Wednesday evening service and of course our Sunday morning service. As I mentioned earlier, that will be with uh, Southeastern's College, uh, Sounds of Praise Ensemble. Brother Steve Barry will be preaching for us. And then the following week, we will get back in our study in the book of Esther, uh, which is where we are not going to go today because we want to be in person and uh, we want to have our congregation together when we continue on our study. So I asked the Lord to give me some direction uh, for this online devotion that we would have on this Sunday morning, knowing you were at home uh, watching either on your phone or iPad, television, your computer, Mac, whatever you're watching it, this service on, wherever you're watching it at. Uh, I do believe that God is still big enough and powerful enough, as he did during COVID, to meet with us this morning. I remind you of what Jesus told the woman at the well when she had wrong theology about worship. And he reminded her that uh, even though the Jews say you worship here and the Samaritans say you worship here, God is looking for those to worship him in spirit and in truth. He reminded her that that's not the way God is worshiped and God's worship is not reserved to a place, just like for you and me. It's not reserved to a sanctuary, our sanctuary at 2911 Old Cherry Point Road. Uh, praise be to God that we serve an omnipresent God, a Holy Spirit that dwells within us. And even right now, as I am here at my house and you are there at your house, that we can worship together. And so right now we're going to do that. Hopefully you've already worshiped with us in song. And now we want to worship together for a few minutes in God's word. And as I pray that God would direct my thoughts this morning, the Lord really, uh, I believe, guided my heart to this truth that I want to share with you for just a few moments from 2 Timothy chapter 4. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, a very, very familiar passage to us, a very familiar relationship uh, to those that have been in church any a length of time. Of course, this is the Apostle Paul writing. He is writing this letter to his son in the faith, Timothy. Timothy is uh, that young man that Paul has seen that God rose up uh, to pass the torch to. Uh, Timothy is going to be one of the next great leaders of the church and has already been pastoring and serving uh, the Lord. And Paul, in this last letter, not just to him, but the last letter that Paul would write, Paul uh, gives us so much to chew on in this entire book. But in this particular chapter, uh, this, as one uh, pastor said, as, as the apostle Paul viewed the end zone, right now we are in uh, playoffs in the NFL and everybody's uh, seeking the Super Bowl and and uh, they're looking to, to cross that finish line strong. And this is the Apostle Paul. He sees the end zone. He sees the finish line. And he's charging his son of the faith, Timothy. And, and there's some verses that are real familiar with us. I'll read some of these and then I'll get to what I think is just the truth that God has for you uh, and for me this morning. Uh, verse 2, of course, preach the word. Uh, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. I mean, here's a charge from uh, the Apostle Paul, one of the most passionate men to ever walk the planet, uh, the one who God used to take the gospel to Asia. Here is the Apostle Paul charging before God, as he said in verse number one, before Jesus Christ, I'm charging you to make sure you preach the word. And then he substantiates this charge and the necessity of it by what he says next in verses three and four. When he says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Why is it so important to preach the words? Because there's coming a day when they're not going to want to hear sound doctrine. Uh, but the Bible says that they would, after their own lust, they would heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they would be turned away. Again, they would turn away their ears from the truth and they would rather believe a liar. They will be turned unto fables. And that is concerning. No one, no doubt it was concerning to Paul. He wanted to make sure that this would be something that Timothy would be concerned about and to live and to minister and to preach with a sense of urgency. But today we are living in a day where sound doctrine does not want to be heard. And, and people seem to want to believe a lie 
as opposed to the truth, but it is still the mandate of the Christian, not just the preacher, but the Christian to preach the word. And then in verse five, he encourages Timothy to watch in all things, to endure affliction, to do the work of the evangelist and to make full proof of his ministry. And again, these are just great challenges that we will not take time this morning to break down, but these are great challenges to Timothy, a son of the faith. And then the apostle Paul says, I'm ready to be offered. He says, the end is near. I know it's near. Uh, you could tell Paul was at peace with the end being near. Uh, he, he says in verse seven, probably uh, one of the most popular verses in this book, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And then he reminds Timothy that we do not do it just for rewards here. <laughs> the rewards that we are after are the rewards in heaven. He says, henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And here's the key, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And I mean, what a beautiful picture this is uh, from the Apostle Paul. And when we read portions of scripture like this, it sounds, it sounds so glorious. And it is. I mean, it sounds so golden. It sounds like, uh, like a trophy to be won. It sounds like a life to be pursued. It, you, you read passages like this and you're like, man, I'm all in. Why wouldn't you give yourself to this? And then, you, then you're reminded of the context, which is the apostle Paul is in prison. He is getting ready to give his life for the gospel's sake. He will be beheaded by Nero and and here he is in prison and he feels practically alone. He's he's writing and he mentions some that were with him and he mentions others that had been on his team and then he mentions some that had forsaken him like Demas. But the apostle Paul is writing this and yes there's victory in his soul, but that victory did not come easy. In fact, I want you to pay attention to one verse, and, uh, and really, we'll read verse 16 and 17 so we can bring the, the, the entire truth together, and then uh, we'll pray. But he says in verse 16, he says, at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. Now, I want you to hear this. The Apostle Paul was referencing times in his life, even times in, during this imprisonment where he felt forsaken. He felt alone. I've talked to so many people in recent days that feel alone, betrayed, forsaken, hurt, discouraged, depressed, down. I've talked to many in recent days for a number of different reasons. They feel as if they can't fight anymore and, and they just want to give up. And maybe that's you today. The truth is maybe, maybe you don't think God's hearing your prayers or maybe you know he is, but you're just not sure if you can wait for the answer. Um, maybe you don't truly believe that God has uh, your best, your good. If you love him, your good in mind. Um, maybe you feel forgotten. Maybe you feel like it's just never going to get any better. Maybe you're waiting for the, the other shoe to drop. So, so however you're feeling, know this. You're not alone in that feeling. There are great people. Uh, I have felt that way in my life. You read after David, you can be rest assured, David felt that way in his life. The Apostle Paul here even reveals that the Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul, felt that way. And how about even Christ? When he even felt forsaken by his father on the cross. It's not uncommon for somebody to feel forsaken or for someone to feel alone. And maybe you do today. There's a verse here that I, I want to encourage you with. 
Let's read verse 16 again, and then let's make sure we read verse 17. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. And then Paul in his gracious way said, I pray that God may not lay that to their charge. And then I want you to notice verse 17. After he said, no man stood with me and all men forsook me. Verse 17, the Bible says, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and he strengthened me. That by me, the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of a lion. Did you catch that? He said, everybody's forsaken me. I feel alone. I feel betrayed. You could tell and have to believe that in his ministry, the apostle Paul, no doubt, had times when he wanted to give up and felt weary. But then he reminds us here in his last letter, in some of the last verses that the Holy Spirit would ever inspire him to pen, the apostle Paul reminded us that even though men may forsake you, God will not. Even though you may feel alone right now, you are not alone. It's one of the reasons that Brother Matt and I have talked about this song, and it's a song that, that again, we just worship the God who stays. It is such a truth that we not only sing, but today you can live, you can rejoice, you can take courage, you can have comfort in the fact that there is a God in heaven who will never forsake you. And in every day, every step, in every storm, God will strengthen you. He will preserve, preserve you. Verse 18 says, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And so what is the, the encouragement today? What's the thought? What's the devotion? The devotion is simply this, that God is with you. Do not be discouraged. Do not give up. Do not give in. Paul here in this passage, he talks about the warfare. He says, I fought a good fight. He talked about even his walk. He said, I've, 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 I've finished my course, this, this race that God's called me to run. He talks about the word, I've kept the faith. And this is something that he's, he's guarded and held to. And through this entire journey, the apostle Paul went through times when he felt forsaken. But then he was reminded that God was right there with me. And I want you to hear me, sir. I want you to hear me. Ma'am, uh, young man, young lady, whoever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever your need is, however you feel, you need to hold to this promise. God is still right there. And he's not going anywhere. Praise be to God that we have the opportunity to know, to love, and to serve a God who stays. Amen, church. Pray with me. Father, thank you so much for this day and for your word and for the privilege to know you. And God, I pray that this will serve as an encouragement to your people. Lord, keep us in your perfect will and rest assure us of the promise that you are a God who stays. In Jesus' name, amen. New Life, thank you for joining us today. We certainly love you. Look forward to, to gathering back together on Wednesday night. Be safe, and uh, we'll see you soon. God bless.